my god. It's right. a big one, eh? Yes, okay. very fresh. Okay. All right. Let's we'll get it out. I, I get it. All right, all right. Okay. Oh, Chris, we can That's do your... our cooking ammo now. Very nice, very okay, nice. We're have nice lovely, catch, Chris. Yeah. Very nice, nice very catch. Nice. All right, fish, now though. we have a beautiful fish to oh, make yes. our cooking ammo. All right, Chris, it's all yours. All right, chef. Hello, everyone. My name is Ronald. I'm the executive chef on board Agent 7 c Mariner. And I'm Christopher Fernandez. I'm the executive chef on board Mariner. So we want to present for you a fantastic dish today. We get a fresh fish from the Pacific Ocean and we want to do a fantastic recipe for you. Just enjoy. So I will be the one first starting over here by showing you how to do the mousse that we required for that recipe. So the fish itself, I want to mention the name of the dish that we will be cooking for you today, is a Mediterranean sea bass that we catch in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we want to be doing a lobster mousse. We want to be wrapping that fish in the lobster mousse with the vegetables outside. We want to show step by step for you. And Chris also is going to show afterwards how to do a bourbon and also to turn some potatoes in rutabaga. This will be part of our dish. So I will start in then by showing how to make the lobster mousse first. And for that, I needed lobster meat. What I have 350 grams of lobster meat. I have as well 250 grams of cream. I have three eggs and one that I will break just to show that it was a whole egg. And that is pretty much what I need to make my lobster mousse. But I need also some seasonings and some pepper. So I am using here today a pacoje. What is that? It's a mixer that we use for different things. But for home, you may don't have it. And it will be more than OK to use a regular mixer to make these ingredients. For starting, it's just added in my scenario that I'm using a pacoje, the 350 grams of lobster meat that is being already cleaned and out of the shell. And you added the cream. The three eggs I broke it already, just to, to speed up a bit the procedures. And you have it then the number four. Four eggs is needed for that recipe. And that all will be done at some pepper and some seasoning. So that is, uh, when I use this pacojet, it's necessary to be uh, bring to the freezer for one night. They'll be better and creamy on the next day. But by using the pacojet, I will be just a bit after freezing, be bringing it from the freezer, put inside this little cup here, and it is a blade that will be going down, all the way down, in very thin millimeter kamats, and we will make this mousse very creamy and to the consistency of a paste. So now let's just pretend that I have done this step by bringing it from the freezer, pass it through with the pacojet on the follow day, and then what I want to get it is exactly a creamy paste. And here I have the creamy paste already. So that turns to be that later. Very creamy and you can manipulate very nice to make it, to mold it the way we wish. So now Chris is going to show you something because I need the fish. All right. I'm going to show you now how to do the filleting of the fish. So we have a lovely sea bass here, probably five to six pounds, okay? What I'm going to do is to turn this in front, the belly part. You just, it's already been uh, clean. So you just make an incision. You remove all the innards, all the contents inside of the belly. And then you put it back in the same position. And then it's start from the upper part. You just make a slice in here like this. Yeah. Okay, like that. Okay, then afterwards, you slice here. Make sure that you don't have too much wastage. Okay. And then start again like this. And then perfect, Chris. And what a beautiful view we have here from the back of the ship, right? We are just here on the observation lounge, and it's just amazing what we have in our backyard. The Pacific Ocean for you, live from board the marina. All right, now I have one play. We can do the same on the other side, the same procedure, all right? You just uh, run your fingers through the fish, you know, and then you will feel exactly where is the location of the bones, yeah? Just be careful not to waste too much. 
Okay, I have one more bones here. Okay, now perfect. So what I'm going to do is how to remove the skin, right? We we'll just make a little incision here on the tail part so you can hold it. It's very important that your knife is very sharp, yeah? And then you just go in the bottom of the skin and just push or I mean pull the skin and then you push the knife, yeah? It looks very easy, but you have to be very careful. And then push it, yeah, like that. Okay? Now, very important is how you trim the fish. You do like this, a little bit of that. Now, of course, you have to think about how is the diameter of your uh, crust or your toppings. So it must be the same sizes, all right? So I'm going to trim it here, a little bit here. Don't throw the trimmings. It's very important to make a soup stock to flavor your sauces, right? Okay, that's pretty much all right, chef. In the meantime, I'm preparing here the vegetables that will be the beautiful presentation of that fish. So for that, you need carrots, you need zucchini, and leeks. So colorful. So what I did, it, I just take it out the skin, peel out nicely. And now what I will try, that is, I have the skill for it because I exercise. I hope you don't cut yourself home. But you want to be using the peeler. These flat peelers are the best ones for that. Uh, you can use it uh, a mandolin as well if you have one home. But uh, I prefer, to be honest, uh, to use it a peeler like I'm using now. And I want to be just and then get all the way through down and pressing with my finger to don't lose. And what I want to get on the end it is a nice thin slice and a band. And I just uh, will do the same with uh, the zucchini pressing down without damage all the way down and I'm able to have a band of the skin of the zucchini. For the leeks, as you clean up, you want to have a leaf like this, you just in then flat it and then when we can start to make it, I know it will be a bit difficult for you to make home, but uh, you have to be patient. There will be the effect later. It's really impressive this recipe. You just want to use a long knife and cut all the way down very precisely and look always in that side of the knife so you can see the exactly size of what we get on the other side right now a little stripe like that one so you want to be collecting stripes from each of the vegetables that you show this is the leeks and then we have the zucchinis and the carrots so as you get enough for each color you can pretty much clean your board and then you want to have some water and you added a very special ingredient. What is saffron? Saffron will give a nice flavor. So I just see we add a bit more. It's already infused into this water some. That's why the water is yellow. But now as a final touch, I will add a bit more saffron. And uh, that will be for the blanch of these vegetables. So we want to get them softer so we can work. And you see what we're going to do. Just wait up. So now my water is boiling. I want to start with the carrots. Just by going very fast. It's going to not take more than 30, 40 seconds to get these carrots softer. I start with the carrots because they can be longer than the other ones. I will follow up with the zucchini. And as the last, the leeks. All of them will be nicely poached inside this soot saffron that I have added a bit of seasoning as well to get some flavor. So I want to be just finished the steaming of this vegetable. And I want to show you how to fold the mat for this recipe. Christopher is going to show our next thing right now. Christopher. All right, so I'm going to do a simple uh, bourbon blanc recipe. Okay, by using uh, white wine. Well, you can use uh, any kind of uh, cooking wine. If you want a sweet uh, version, you can use uh, sparkling wine, champagne. Well, in this case, I'm gonna use uh, cooking white wine here. I'm gonna put two third cup of the white wine. And then, I have this uh, 80 grams of shallots, which is finely chopped, or we call it brunoise. Okay, put to the simmer. 
Anyway, Bourblanc is basically a white wine butter sauce. It's a French uh, sauce that's normally used uh, to accompany seafood dishes and fish dishes. Okay, so white wine and shallots, I'm going to reduce this one until like a syrupy consistency, almost nothing in there. So I'm going to put maximum, the temperature. Okay, so while I'm waiting for this one, I will show you the turning of some vegetable to accompany the dish, right? I have a potato here, which is already turned, and rotabaga. Well, I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. Let's make sure that your paring knife is very sharp. And always take care of your fingers, right? So I have a wedge of uh, rutabaga here. The perfect uh, turned uh, rutabaga and potato is normally have a six corner. Well, I'm not uh, asking you to make it, but you can do it five, no problem, yeah? So first, do like this. Trimmings you keep aside. You can use for soups and to flavor your stock or sauces. Right? I will make it slowly, okay? Right? That was slowly? <laughs> a little bit. Okay, <laughs> voila. So you have a nice uh, turn, uh, rotabaga. Potato, okay. You have a whole potato. As I said, you can peel this one so you can uh, keep the trimmings you can use for soup, yeah? Or mashed potato, in case. So, I will cut both ends. Cut into wedge. Probably six wedge, yeah? Depends on the size of the potato. So. Well, the same uh, process. Hold it. Not so tight, otherwise uh, you... You know, you destabilize the balance of your finger and you're going to cut your finger. Same way here. Do like that. It looks very simple, but I've been doing this for 17 years, yeah? So, another one. Third. Fourth. Fifth. I said six or fifth. Well, I can make it six. Just to make everybody happy. All right, so I have a beautiful... Turn potato and rotabaga. All right. So this is to accompany the beautiful dish of Chef Ronald Massa. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. Very nice the way you present. All right. Listen okay. to me. Do you have your coffee already? Well, uh, we are running out of time, because so I miss the. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to cook with the wine always. You know, yeah. it's very important. It's very important for the recipe and also for tasting. You know, we have to always to check every element of our recipe. So, Chris, let's check the wine now. Is it a good substitute for the coffee? <laughs> by, by this time? Anyway, we are in the lovely, All right. uh, you know. Salute, Chris. Pacific Ocean. Pleasure to work with you. Salute. It's burning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As you can see, uh, it's almost uh, nothing left there, no? but I want to have this kind of syrupy consistency, right? To get the flavor, the full-bodied flavor of the white wine, okay? Now, Traditional Bourbon Blanc, we don't put cream at all. But in this case, for non-professional uh, or uh, some people start to know the cooking, you can add uh, a little bit cream to stabilize the texture and the consistency of your Bourbon Blanc, right? So in this case, a little bit of more reduction. And then have a nice cut of butter, which is chilled. You don't use a soft, or room temperature butter. Otherwise, you're going to make your uh, sauce like, uh, you know, split. We call it split uh, sauce, yeah? So in this case, this one is uh, perfect now. I'm going to reduce the temperature. And voila, ready to go. Yeah, incorporate the butter inside. Opa, wire whisk, very important. Okay, the first thing you have to understand when you're doing the butter is how to temper the butter. It's like you're tempering a chocolate also. It's the same. Okay, so you just incorporate the butter until you achieve a buttery texture, but not split, yeah? That's why I said it's very important you temper. Tempering is like more on the, on the temperature, yeah? As you can see, it's incorporating the butter but in a very very nice texture yeah then now you can add now your butter you can add more, more yeah 
Me, I like butter. It's so. like Paul Bouvler, no? Yes, sir. <laughs> so now, don't be afraid. As long as you get the nice uh, temperature, it will not split. Well, if I make it split, the chef will throw me in the, in the ocean, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All yeah. right, you can see. Chef, have a look. Very How nice, beautiful is that, nice. right? Okay. You love the beurre blanc? I love it, Bob. Yeah? Wow, amazing. In my house, I used to cook this one, but uh, yeah. thanks for them, it's, it's, it's like uh, something uh, different. So. Uh, you guys like more yeah. <laughs> style, oriental style sauce. But right? anyway, yeah. this, as what I said, this is basic. You can make variation out of it by using your favorite herbs. For example, it's chives, parsley. Yeah. Now, in this case, chef, voila. I have wow. a beautiful caviar. Caviar. That will Caspian be just what we needed. Caspian sea mollusk sauce. So, Very this good. is my variation of the bourbon. blanc. But I'm going to put this one later on. Yes. Okay. Indeed. That's a good idea. I'm done here, chef. All right. Just Very salt good. and pepper and that's it. I thank you very much, Chris. Show very done. well how to do a bourbon. blanc. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. And now, I will then show you how to do the most uh, not difficult part of this recipe, but requires some patience. So, remember, I had blanched all the vegetables in stripes. Now, I open on that table, on the top of my cutting board, a thin plastic film. So, and just stretch, that is really flatted. Just make some weight on the corner, since it's some wind here on the veranda. So, I will start it with one stripe and follow by the others. Just intercalate the colors. I know, it just takes some time and patience, but you will understand after how beautiful is going to be this dish with this uh, impressive, you know, step of the recipe. So you have to go one by one and just intercalate, as I say. So just to speed up this recipe, I don't want to stay here forever doing that. I have it ready, exactly this step, and this is how it looks like when you have it all one after the other. As you can see, the colors are intercalated proportionally, and there is no gap in between. So that will be nice, because now I will show you how to fold the fish. So let's then just pretend I did the entire thing and transform to that. Now we're just, just very short to make it my, his, my clean board here. And you want to take that, maintain the fridge, uh, because that will be maintain the nice colors of your vegetables as well. So now what you have to do is unwrap it very slowly, that you don't damage. Chris, I want to need your assistance. Yes, chef. Just to help me out here very fast. So we want to be removing the over the part to the top. Just take from one side, slowly we go up, yeah. So without damage, I will be open again because I done yet in advance. You can do the same in your home. And now, it's perfect. That's beautiful. All right. So as you have open, make sure the wind will not <laughs> fold it again. I have my lobster. Remember I did it in the beginning? So the lobster paste. So just make sure it's very nice and fluffy. And now I will distribute it in the middle. Just when you put it the first time, slowly. Don't uh, um, go over yet. Just put enough that all the bands are stable on the board. As you have something on the board, like I have it, and then yes, and then you can, with the spatula, flat it a little bit. A bit precautions to don't damage the bands on the bottom, the mat. And as you have enough, I want to ask just Chris to preparing already the fish for me. Eyes are ready. Almost, I want to tell you when, just a second. So you make a lot, enough of the lobster mousse everywhere and make sure you cover like a rectangle, just in the middle. No need more than that. And now is the time being, I want to ask Chris to bring me the fish. All right, here we go, the beautiful fish. All right, Chris, I need you to set exact on the middle. Exactly yeah. in the middle. Perfect. Did I cut it perfectly? Absolutely. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Again, we want to be cover that fish with the lobster mousse again. And make sure you go everywhere. Just the flat it, that is proportionally, um, just it's mousse everywhere, there's nowhere is missing some mousse on top of the fish. Okay, one more and we should be okay. A little bit patience. So my fish is completely covered with the mousse. And now, is the time we fold it. For folding, you make sure you use the plastic film that is already with us here. And the first, you fold the part. You just come over and fold it over 
and press the bands inside the booth because when you return, the bands is going to stay just right there. And when you fold from that side, you can close and fold over. And voila, the fish is folded completely. You are just a little bit with your hands. Press a little bit on the top, not much, just to be setting the bands into the mousse. And voila, you can use the plastic film to cooking. So what I have set here is a steamer, okay? And this steamer, um, I want to set it to boiling. Just want to put a little bit. And that is where you go with the fish inside. And you can close, and it will take approximately 16 to 18 minutes, depend of, uh, depend of the size of your fish. Yeah. All right, uh, that will done the steam for a while. Uh, Chris, I think now we go to the finalization. We can start with the potatoes All right. and the rutabaga. And my fish is steaming, as I say, it's going to take approximately 16 to 18 minutes according to the size of the fish, right? Okay, so I have the rutabaga here, which is uh, already turned and cooked, yeah? So I need one, maybe, rutabaga and two potato. Okay? Just put a nabu butter. So I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, butter the rutabaga and potato with a chop of parsley, right? Get some pressed parsley. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, it's, it's very important that uh, you use uh, your favorite herbs to season your vegetable or your potato. But uh, I recommend that if you have uh, seafoods or uh, fish dish, you avoid uh, using uh, very strong uh, herbs like rosemary, sage. So in this case, I'm using a parsley only, right? So put the turn and cook potato and rotabaga. Toast it in there. Then just put last the chopped parsley and toast it one more time. Okay. Wow. Oh, I think we're done. Okay. So beautiful rutabaga. Very and nice. Potato. Very nice. Perfect. Okay. So for the sauce, I have this uh, already made uh, bourbon blanc. Remember, it's very important that your bourbon blanc always keep lukewarm. You, what you can do, if your guest is not yet around, you can uh, keep this one in the double boiler. Just make sure the water is lukewarm, so you just keep the temperature, all right? So it doesn't split. If you put it in a cold area, it will split. If you uh, put in a high temperature, it will split. So it has to be in between, okay? Now, chef, I have this beautiful caspian wow, caviar, amazing. right? Amazing, very so nice. So what I'm going to do that now? Would be just like what needed. Do not use a whisk when you use this uh, caviar. It's very delicate, you know. It's a uh, egg of the fish. So what I'm going to do is just to fold it, yeah, inside. Maybe one teaspoon of caviar for a uh, one cup of the bourbon, yeah? and fold it slightly. And voila! As you can very see, it's fair. beautiful, yeah. What we want when we put the caviar is not to break the eggs of the fish, so there will be then really a brown sauce. It will be not what we want. Yes, Except exactly. like that, you should not be boiling after that also the sauce because we will be made damage the eggs. Okay? Yes. No, we have the accompaniment. Yes, what is the, the potato, rutabaga, the sauce? Yes, sir. And now, voila! After 60 fish. minutes, 70 minutes, the fish is ready. How I did that? <laughs> I cooked before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the TV, my ladies and gentlemen. So voila, the fish is right here, and now as you can see, we is cook it. And now is the time being we will start it then to proceed. So as we are right now handle the items to be finished, uh, just want to use a pair of gloves. We have been prepared everything with our bare hands since it was a cooking process. Now it's come to the finalization, and now we cook the fish, uh, cut the fish in the proportion I needed. Yeah? Okay. Chris, the plate is ready. All right. We already have our idea how to present uh, our dish, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So just let me get them inside these gloves here. Okay, I hope you are enjoying the view, ladies and gentlemen. 
It's a very nice to be here doing a kokinema in a live, a live with, for you and outside in the open air. Usually I meet you all in the theater. I miss you all. Actually, really, I miss to do my cooking demos. It's a great honor to be doing that for you. And you can see from home our, what we do on board. Ladies and gentlemen, what you do right now is just really unwrap the fish slowly. You find the way where you just wrap it before. Just make sure if you don't, you can cut with a knife because to, due to the fact we cook that inside the steamer, they may are very sticky together. So you can find a way of open them again and slowly just release the fish from this wrap. There we go. The fish is ready to be cut. Okay, Chris. All right. I want to start and then you can bring the potatoes in Rutabaga. Okay. And I want to ask you kindly to put one potato on Rutabaga, one potato, so the color are also proportionally. Very nice. Perfect, Chris. Beautiful, like, uh, oh, like yeah. we always know how to do. Oh, huh? yes. So I will be cutting the fish a little bit now. And it uh, will be a bit of waste, unfortunately, that you can buy it in the galley in the kitchen already before your guests. And uh, I will cut a nice diamond out of this fish. So it will be very nice to present them on the plate. So important is slowly transfer the fish to your to the plate without damage. Now, Chris, you can come with the sauce. All right, and uh, we want to need it a little bit of your butter. So, chef, where do you want me to put the sauce? It's Listen, like here? you can just put on the front, right the front, here. Right? Yeah, we should not go over the fish. Okay, that, all right. Now what I want to do is brush some butter on top just to make them shining as they're cooking. Take a little bit away the, the shining of the vegetables. As you can see, you just clarify some butter and you can nice brush the fish on top and make them really shiny again. And finally, a beautiful garnish. Perfect, Chris. Wow, Chris, that's just really very nice. I'm hungry now. I feel very hungry. <laughs> it's a beautiful dish. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was a great honor to have assisting us on this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you, Christopher. It was a Thank pleasure. You, it's always a pleasure. And salute. Yeah. Salute. Bon salute. appetit, everyone. Bon appetit. From Arena. Always a pleasure. From our kitchen to yours. Thank you.